Celebi is the best legendary Pokemon of all time. I'm Sir Squire, and I have five reasons to tell you why. Number five, the GS Ball. If you guys remember, if you guys were a little kidlin' like I was when we were watching the Pokemans when the Millennium turned and whatever, there was the GS Ball. And even if you're a little kidlin' now and you don't know, go back and watch it, it's great. So you have the GS Ball, and the GS Ball was like this weird thing, right? And everyone was like, oh my god, what could it be? Really, really, it was just promotional material for Pokemon's new game, Gold and Silver. Those games were okay. And then, and then, some people say they were amazing. And, and, uh, uh, everyone wondered what the GS Ball was, and Ash had to go to the Orange Islands to pick up the GS Ball, but really it was just a big plot device, and just an overall, just like, whole thing, right? And then, we find out later that what was supposed to be in the GS Ball was Celebi. Now, I'm gonna offer some critical thinking to all of you. Why? was Celebi being delivered to Professor Oak in a GS ball. Think about it. We'll get back to it. Number four, it conveniently solves plot holes in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So for reasons that I'm going to explain later in the video, Celebi can definitely exploit a bunch of plot holes in the original Gold and Silver and solve a bunch of questions too. Like number one, where was Giovanni? during the Team Rocket invasion of the radio tower. Everybody has a radio, so he must have heard the transmission. So where did he go? He must have known that his team was back together, and he could have joined up back with the team. So why didn't he? Well, it turns out that you magically appear in front of him and kick his butt, that's why. So, if you're ever wondering, Celebi made that happen. He also just manages to teleport you in front of Red, I mean, uh, not Red, Silver and Giovanni. Matt. Pokemon Theory! Red is Giovanni's also son! That's been done so many times in that game. But Giovanni basically tells Silver that he's daddy. Well, I mean, they know that they're, that they're father and son, but Giovanni left them, which is messed up. But it's Giovanni, so, you know, you expect it. And... Yeah, it's a whole thing, and Celebi makes that plot point incredibly clear through a random event that hardly anybody got and only anybody only knows about because of either Celebi or because they watched the YouTube video on it or hacked it in their game, which is pretty dumb on Pokemon's part to make it that inclusive. Number three, it is a living time machine. So as I said, Celebi can go back in time. Now, you can argue with me. Oh, what? the algorithm of space and dolly what they can do that too shut up first of all celebi was here first right not only was celebi here first but celebi's cuter and tinier so you can argue that celebi's just better at it it's been here and been more successful and it communicates with the whoms and it goes with the whomies to all their new locations and stuff so you can't be mad at Celebi for being really, really good at its job, which it is, by the way. Number two, it is literally a psychic onion. So look at Celebi's head and understand that it's a psychic onion. It could also be an amazing salad. So if you're ever tired of your Celebi for whatever reason, you could chop up its head into little onion pieces and just toss it in a salad, grill it over some meat. I don't know what you people do with your lives and you can eat psychic Celebi. <gasps> Pokemon Theory! I wonder if you eat Celebi, you become a time-traveling psychic grass type too, or if this does not work like the Titan Shifters in Attack on Titan. I don't know. And number one! Professor Oak lied about the Pokedex this whole time. So if you remember, Professor Oak was like, oh, there's a Pokemon we still haven't discovered. He had a friendship with Celebi. He knew Celebi and he knew what it can do. And it was not in the Pokedex. It wasn't even 152. He lied. Not only that, but he's been to Johto. You're going to tell me, right? You're going to tell me, Oak. You're going to listen, buddy. You're going to tell me that within a year of, within two years, right? Not only... Are you completely familiar with everybody in the Johto region? Like, completely. Like, you're going over Mr. Pokemon's house, you have a radio show with Mary, and you're doing all this stuff, right? Not only that, but you've discovered, like, 
150 new Pokemon within that time span? I don't buy it, man. I don't buy it at all. I don't listen to me. Shut your face and listen. You lied to Red. You lied to me. You lied to all of us in that first game. So I don't want to hear it. And don't even get me started. Do not comment in my comment section and go, Oh, but they didn't make the games yet. Shut your face. They knew they were going to make ho -Oh. They knew they had Tyranitar in Gen 1 and they took it out to put it in Gen 2. Don't even give me this garbage. They knew what they were doing. They're fools and they lied to us. Get woke. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please show some love and support and definitely hang out a little bit. And maybe hit the subscribe button. Uh, I will be uploading more of these at some point. I think I'm going to take a little break from them, though. I've done quite a few of them. And I think I'm going to stretch on to some other content for a little bit. But I will come back. Don't you worry. I always come back to this. It's one of my favorite things to do on YouTube. So I will be back doing these at some point in the near future. Um, but very excited, very excited. I have some cool stuff lined up, so I hope you guys are ready for the cool stuff that's lined up. And yeah, so I think I'm gonna get out of here. So whether you're old, whether you're new, I don't really care what you do. My name is Sir Squire, and I will see you around.